guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know, and I wanted to give you guys another life update today because the last time I talked to you, it ended on kind of a weird note. <laughs> like, I'm unemployed and confused and there's a pandemic. So I wanted to let you know that things are good and I'm doing all right. <laughs> So basically, I guess we'll start there with the unemployment. That has been very strange. Like, I don't know the last time, oh, you know what? It feels like, it initially felt like I was in high school again and didn't have a summer job and I just did nothing with my days in the summer. Like, I would wake up and I would want to do things but if I didn't have enough on my plate I couldn't get the motivation to even get started um, so what I've learned about myself is that I need a good amount of busyness to actually get anything done otherwise I get nothing done because if I have like one chore on my list I'm gonna just keep putting it off and then never get it done I need like momentum you know I need to get going and then stay going <laughs> and so uh, initially when I was staying home I would wake up with my husband to try and like start my day and he would get ready and leave for work and then I would sit on the couch and watch uh, Justin Trudeau give his speech about the pandemic and I would get all glum about how the world is ending and then often I wouldn't like get off the couch until noon and then I would really try and motivate myself to do something um, and so I was just in this weird mind space of like I would have really good days when I would be productive and then really bad days where I just felt like crap because there's no purpose right and it's also hard because I feel like I need to be more appreciative of this time because I have a baby on the way and soon enough I'm not gonna have any time to myself but I can't just force myself to appreciate being in a time when I'm not having a good time does that make sense? It also didn't help that um, I wasn't getting paid and no stores were open anyways, so I couldn't go out and do anything. I couldn't really see friends. I couldn't go to the thrift store. I couldn't spend money in general. So I just felt pretty stuck. But I figured out a new rhythm and things have gotten a lot better. <laughs> it was also very financially straining only being on one income. Um, and that is because I did not get my employment insurance coverage for two months which is a very long wait um, to go without pay um, and if you're not from Canada then you wouldn't know but uh, basically you pay into unemployment insurance while you're working so that if you ever are unemployed you get a small portion of money to help you along so that's what I was waiting for and uh, it finally kicked in and I don't really want to blame them because they're dealing with the headache of the pandemic and they're very busy and overworked so I'm just glad that I got it and I'm leaving it at that. Also where I live um, we've started to let up on rules kind of. It's very like confusing. There's a lot of blurry lines like our health minister says that we can double our bubble and like expand our social groups slightly um, and you can hug and kiss kiss your grandparents but you still need to like socially distance and to hang out outside with people preferably but you can hang out inside so it's just very like confusing on what we're supposed to do um, here in BC we're managing the pandemic really well and our numbers are pretty steady as far as I know last time I heard I think we had a couple days where we had no deaths which is amazing so stores are opening back up the the economy is kicking back up which is amazing as you know from my previous videos I have been able to go thrift shopping which has been so nice um, and just being able to get out and feel a little normal again has been so so nice I've also been able to go and visit my mom and my sister um, a lot my sister owns a cake and cupcake shop uh, so I go and visit her and eat some cupcakes yeah so it's just been easier to fill my day with more purpose and I'm really enjoying unemployment now. <laughs> I've also been, oh, Fabricland opened back up. So thankful because that's like a main hobby that I just couldn't do because I couldn't buy any fabric and now I can spend like the whole day sewing baby stuff and I'm so happy so happy so that has been great i i feel more normal again and i'm very thankful for that and then in a month my life is going to get turned upside down with a baby so 
can't wait. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's talk about the baby next. So I am 34 weeks pregnant now, which is crazy because like I'm almost there. Like it's becoming very real that th there's going to be a baby in this house <laughs> and I have to care for it. So I've been having some of those like panicky moments where you're like in bed at 2 a.m. and you wake up and you realize that you're going to have a baby and you don't know how to take care of babies and you don't know what you're going to do and then you don't sleep the rest of the night. So that's been nice, but also not that bad because I'm not working so I can just sleep in. <laughs> but with a lot of the fears still comes a lot of the excitement because obviously we are so beyond thankful for this baby and and I can't wait to like hold the little person but yeah so 34 weeks pregnant I feel very pregnant now and I was saying this to like my co-workers months ago I didn't know when I would be leaving work due to pregnancy because I didn't know what it felt like to be seven eight months pregnant because it's not just like you have a basketball under your shirt right it's not like you just have a belly there's things that come along with it one of those things being it feels like I've pulled my groin for the past like two months so whenever I like get up and start walking I need to like warm up into it um, also anything gives me Braxton Hicks contractions now like putting dishes away and that's not a lie just to get out of doing the dishes um, walking to the washroom uh, carrying anything that has a weight so it's been a little frustrating feeling limited but obviously it's fine because it's because I'm growing a baby so I'm not too upset about it I also found out that there are things that I didn't expect I would be limited on. Like Josh and I are very much into the outdoors and we love going off-roading with friends and finding cool lakes and, and having bonfires and exploring or whatever. And so we went to do a lake day with some friends and we went on a forest service road that was very popular, like it's pretty well maintained, it's nothing crazy, and it hurt my belly so bad. Like I was holding onto my stomach the whole time, like trying to keep it steady while we went on this mildly bumpy road and it was so painful like I'm pretty sure like the baby was fine I've had midwife appointments since and the baby's fine um, but I think it's my body that can't handle it and that was really um, a bummer because now I can't go on these lake day trips with my friends and I don't want to hold Josh back because I want him to have fun still so I'm just getting like left at home which is fine because I have plenty of things to do but I just wish that I could join everyone obviously. I'm also just very confused about how to handle the baby with the pandemic because like I said there's all this uncertainty of what we're supposed to be doing and like it's not like our health minister is saying newborns are high at risk keep them isolated, don't let your family touch them, but also you don't want to be overexposing your newborn to illness. Like, just in general, pandemic aside, you generally want to like sanitize your hands before you touch the baby and like don't let strangers touch your baby. But yeah, I just don't really know how I want to handle family members with the baby because of course I want the grandparents um, and just any like close family to be able to hold the baby enjoy it as much as we're enjoying it but I also don't want to be putting the baby at risk so I'm very confused about this and I've been told to just do what I think is right but I don't know what's right because this is uh, what is Trudeau always says? Unprecedented times? Is that what he says? Something like that. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm also dealing with. Not the biggest deal, but... And also, I don't know what things are going to be like in July, so we'll see when we get there and we'll make a decision. <laughs> I should also show you my baby bump while I'm here. Here it is. 34 weeks. It's, uh... It's a lot higher than it used to be. I was originally carrying pretty low. A lot of people have been telling me that I'm carrying really small, but at the same time at my midwife appointments, I get measured and I'm measuring right on track. So I don't really know what that means. Um, and my weight gain hasn't been astronomical, but my midwife has no issue with it because like the baby's still growing. I'm still getting a lot of movements and yeah, basically, it's nothing to worry about supposedly but also I know with like your first baby you just generally 
tend to carry smaller and then when I have my second kid I'll blow up like a balloon within three months so that's just how it goes <laughs> yeah and so that's that the baby's moving a lot lately which is super fun and like not just like little kicks but like scraping on my stomach <laughs> which sounds painful but I don't mean it that way it's really fun I've been getting um kicks to the rib kicks to the bladder which I understand why people hate it because it is not comfortable but I think it's so exciting because it means there's a baby. What else is there? Um, oh, I told you in last week's video that I painted my house and that was a whirlwind, basically. I don't know why I put it off so long. I've been meaning to ask my landlord since, basically since I left work, um, if I could paint because obviously I have so much time on my hands. But I think I was just really nervous about it and I wanted to wait for the weather to get better so that I can, you know, keep the doors and windows open for ventilation. But I waited till I was like 32 weeks pregnant and he took time to think on it and then also said, are you up for this because you're obviously quite pregnant? And I was like, oh yeah, no problem. And he's like, well, it's probably going to take you like a month. Like, are you prepared for that? And I'm like, seriously, a month? Because like, we have 900 square feet and like two bedrooms and a living room. I don't really think it'll take me that long. Keep in mind, I have to paint all the closets as well, which is quite a bit of work, but I still... Like, I'm not working. Like, I can do this all day long, you know? But he gave me the go, which was so exciting. Um, he didn't let me pick the color. He gave me two options for two different whites, which is fine because he wants to um, keep his life simpler and use the paint that he typically uses, right? And I didn't want to get Josh involved because he's still working 9 to 5. I don't want to be adding something else on his plate at the end of the day, and I'm very much capable of doing this. And yeah, honestly, it was so fun. I found out that I love love painting. I don't like um, tearing rooms apart and emptying them into uh, other rooms because my house just felt like chaos. Like especially emptying the storage closet out and putting that in the living room, I felt like I was, I, I couldn't feel comfortable at home because everything was too chaotic. But the actual act of painting was really fun and I got it done in a week. So proud of myself. I basically would spend one day emptying and prepping and then one day painting a room and then I would put everything back in that room and empty and prep another room and yeah I had lots of people offer to help but I, I was honestly like I'm good like I'm filling my days. This is what I've been wanting is like purpose, right? So yeah, anyways, that was a long-winded story about just how I painted my house. And now it's like, I didn't realize how much, actually I shouldn't say that, I did realize how much I hated the yellow, but I am just so beyond happy with how not yellow the walls are. I'll put some photos, I don't know why I didn't say this earlier, I'll put some before and after photos up. The yellow walls are so gross, like you think that yellow would be a happy color, which it is, and I love yellow in any other place except my walls. It just felt like, my best description is like, a dingy corner store owned by a a smoker. I don't know, does that make sense? Like, it just felt gross. It didn't feel nice. Um, and so I'm especially excited to have the white walls for um, the winter coming up because it can get so dark and gloomy. So having white walls to brighten the house is going to be so nice, especially because postpartum depression is a real thing and I want to do as much as I can to avoid that. So yeah, that's the home reno that, <laughs> that I've done. Um, we're also trying to get some big woodworking projects done before the baby comes. I don't know if that's going to happen. Like our bedside tables are just from the thrift store they were something like seven dollars each so it'd be nice if Josh made some like matching ones I uh, he's also been talking for years about making us a new bed frame because I just have this Ikea one from my teenage years and so to prompt him I told him that I <laughs> I put it up on Facebook marketplace and if someone comes and buys it we're sleeping on the floor until he builds a bed frame so motivation <laughs> yeah I guess that's all I want to talk about. It's been very confusing times, but I'm settling into my new rhythm, even though, like I said, it's going to get torn up again when the baby comes. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know that things are good right now, and I'm not as confused and concerned as I was during the last update. <laughs> 
I also wanted to thank you guys for so much support on my last life update um, because this is very much different than the usual type of video I put out and it was really fun and getting to have conversations with you guys about how you liked just learning more about me and uh, the things that are going on behind Embers and Ash. So yeah, if you haven't seen that life update yet, maybe go check that one out because like I said, there was a lot of stuff going on like two months ago. Was it two months ago? Oh, it was, wasn't it? Weird. Time is going by in such a strange way right now. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!